Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the Port Charles 411. Today we are doing part eight. Bobby Spencer. And I think we're just starting in 1997, right? We finished up 1996. Yep. Okay. So where did we kind of, I mean, we left off at the end of 1996 and it says, it's just there. <laughs> so this is when Bobby had just married Stefan mm-hmm. after knowing him for two weeks. It, it was maybe a month. It was maybe a month. It was a little bit longer than that. Come on. Another two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it was. We ended with Carly got the cold shoulder when Tony brings her to the party at the Brownstone for New Year's Eve. Yes. And Justice and Tony had been talking about his custody case for Lucas, and Carly feels neglected and lets Tony have it. So then, starting off the new year in 1997 with flowers from Tony to apologize to Carly, the two make love, but after Tony has to leave abruptly. And then Bobby and Tony were at the Brownstone with Lucas. They're all sitting on the couch together. And Bobby tells Lucas, Bobby says that Lucas's fever is going down. So the medicine must be, must be working. I guess Lucas was sick. Yes. Okay. Well, obviously, because he had a fever. Tony comments on how it's a good thing that Mac fixed the boiler. So they'd have to, they'd have to had check or they would have had to have checked into the poor Charles hotel. Lucas asks if they can so that he can go swimming. Oh, yeah. He's definitely feeling better if he's right. <laughs> doing that. They all laugh, and Bobby and Tony say no, of course, and they tell him to finish up his drink. Lucas asks if he can hear a story if he finishes his drink, and Bobby says, okay. He wants to hear the story of Prince Ivan and the Magic Firebird, which is Russian, so only Stefan and Nicholas, Nicholas can read it, but he likes to look at the pictures. Bobby says it sounds like fun, and she tells Lucas to kiss Tony goodnight, and they exit together to go upstairs to bed. Back with Bobby and Tony, Lucas was back in bed, Bobby asks if she can stay the night there, and they fall into an old routine of boring conversation. They talk about fixing the bay windows, and they make a fire. After the fire is made, Tony tells her that she has always been a fire-making surgery assistant. A fine fire-making slash surgery assistant. Bobby says that she has to go and talks about Lucas for a few more minutes. Then she tells Tony that it's nice to know that they can still parent together. Tony hesitates and it seems like he might have to tell her about the custody suit that he's planning, but he ends up telling her to drive safely. And then a month later at the Cassadine Mansion, Stefan comes into the living room and sees Catherine dressed up in a gown with a drink in her hand sitting on the couch. She stands up and asks him if he'd like a drink. Suddenly, Catherine turns to Bobby Turns into Bobby. Turns into Bobby. And she notices Stefan's surprised look on his face. Mm-hmm. Bobby is concerned. How? Wait, what? Bobby's Good, concerned. Finish the sentence. Okay. What? Bobby is concerned. And Stefan says that he just got back from visiting Laura's grave. They talk for a while about his feelings about her death and how they're affecting Nicholas. He mentions that he thinks Nicholas was there earlier too. Bobby fills him in on what happened at Monica's trial. Oh, was that when she... Dorman? Yep. Okay, cool. And remarks on how something so horrible has brought Monica and Alan closer together. You know, murder will do that. Yep. Well, that, okay. Mm, no, that really wasn't self defense. She tied him up. <laughs> um, <laughs> whew. She says that maybe Luke will even realize he was wrong about Stefan. Oh. Bobby hopes there's still a chance for she and Luke to patch up their differences. She says that maybe Luke will even realize he was wrong about Stefan. Stefan gives her a look and they both laugh. Bobby says, yeah, right. And then asks Stefan if he has a San Francisco bridge to sell her. They hug and Bobby exits. Okay. So there was a lot going on at that time. Um, So this is where, remember last time we talked about Catherine was shot. Stefan 
shot Catherine because he thought that it was Luke or whatever. So he is spending a lot of time visiting Catherine because he feels guilty that he shot her and he is developing feelings for her. So whenever he walked in and saw her sitting on the couch getting ready to offer him a drink, he is like fantasizing that it would be her there. And instead it's Bobby and his mind like snaps back into reality. And that's why he has the confused look. And she's like, what's, what's the matter? Like, why are you acting like you're not expecting me? And then um, we don't know that Laura at that time, we didn't know that Laura's death was being faked. That was part of that mm-hmm. whole special that they had. So he's talking about um, visiting Laura's grave and whatever. Cause he thinks that Laura really is dead at that time. And Luke is pretending to be really mad at Bobby because Laura Laura is supposed to be dead. And so Bobby has taken Stefan's side instead of the Spencer side. And that is why they're not being a good brother and sister right now. Gotcha. I was m- not more confused, but differently confused with Bobby asking Stefan if he has a bridge to sell, if a San Francisco bridge to sell her, because the saying is the brooklyn bridge because it was a guy that would try that had like he would falsely sell like the brooklyn bridge and things like that and that's where you know it the phrase kind of comes from is oh and i got a bridge to sell you if you're basically pulling someone's leg or if they're believing something that's kind of ridiculous right i feel like it would have made more sense if stefan had said that to bobby because he's not from the united states that maybe he would not have realized that he mixed up his cities right I'm thinking way too much into that one. You are. <laughs> <laughs> so then on February 5th at Cassadine's, at the Cassadine's mansion, Bobby tells Nicholas that she thinks Laura would be very pleased if he would represent the family at the ceremony honoring her and Leslie at GH. Bobby says that she sees a lot of Laura and Nicholas. They both have a big heart. She asks him to be her escort there again, and he agrees and exits. Bobby and Stefan talk about the change in Nicholas that happened after Laura's, quote, death. And Stefan vents his frustration over the fact that Nicholas seem seemingly misinterpreting everything that he says. Bobby explains that Nicholas has been hurt by all the changes in his life in the past year and by the fact that Stefan never told him that Leslie was alive all those years ago. Bobby says that Nicholas is just learning that his idol is only human, but Nick loves Stefan and the love will win out. Aww. Stefan thanks Bobby and heads over to GH. And that's just all important because... That was like one of the sad parts of Stefan and Bobby's relationship not being real or not working out was that um, Nicholas and Bobby really did become close. Like he looked up to her and they had a really strong bond there. So, you know, just kind of going over all of that. Yeah, because then we see Nicholas was at Laura's grave and Bobby came and uh, he tries to get her to go away, but she won't. Bobby tells him that Laura wanted to follow him after their confrontation but she wouldn't let her do it. Nicholas asks Bobby why Laura lied to him and left him again. He says that Laura must really hate him and Bobby disagrees. She says Laura's just used to being, Laura's just used to being excused. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Bobby then tells Nicholas about her own troubles with her mother and father when she was younger. She tells the story of how her mother died of appendicitis because her father was passed out drunk and couldn't take her mother to the hospital. Nicholas asked how she dealt with it And Bobby said that she just hung on to Luke and he got them to Florida and their Aunt Ruby's. She tells Nicholas that the idea of whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger is crop. Amen. (laughs) Amen. She says that whatever doesn't kill you is your life. Yes. Okay, we're getting those on pillows. (laughs) Encourages Nicholas to get through his pain. She knows he can do it because he's done it before. Bobby tells him if life gets too hard, his family will always be there for him, the Cassadine side of the family. She tells him that one day he'll wake up and feel like God remembered him at last. Oh, Nicholas says that he wants Laura to cry at his grave and he wants to be able to watch. (laughs) Guess that came true. (laughs) Bobby asks him to trust her when she says that Laura wasn't trying to hurt him. So I'm assuming that Laura's back now. She's not back yet. No. Oh, oh, so they're talking like she was. Okay. Uh, to do, she was going along with one of Luke's schemes that he probably gave her like five minutes to think about, and she figured she would worry about the consequences later. Nick doesn't understand how she can live that way. Then he expresses all the guilt he feels for having blamed Stefan for Laura's death. Bobby tells him that Stefan loves him no matter what. They talk about the differences between Bobby and Luke, and Bobby tells Nicholas that he is a good per- <clears throat> that he is a good person. 
She offers to drive him to the hospital so he can talk to Stefan. And then at the hospital, Luke ran into Bobby. She comments on his haircut and says that, oh, is this when he got rid of his wild Doc Brown style hair? Yeah. Yep. Kind of went like the closer shave. Yeah. Shave dish. <laughs> um, that she could have lived without seeing it. She says that she could have gone the rest of her life without seeing him at all. She thanks him for banning her from Laura's funeral and sparing his performance. Yeah, Laura has to be back then. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. She must be. Okay. Because Nicholas is mad that she went away and then she was, yeah. she was spared. And then they're talking about the... F- yep. Okay. Yeah. I, didn't, okay. I thought it was another month or so. No, that's okay. Bobby asks him if he feels foolish being the man who cried Cassidine. Luke says that Stefan shot Catherine Bell and framed him for the shooting. But Bobby isn't buying it. She says she believes that Luke went back to the island that night and saw a movement in the bush and thought it was Stefan, so he shot, not knowing that it was Catherine. She says that he could have shot her or Nicholas instead. True. But that would have been no problem then because he would have had been shooting a Cassidine. Ooh. Yep. Ooh, she said she's a Cassidine and not a Spencer. Oh, that's the next line. Luke asks her if that's how she sees herself, and she says, yes, it's better than being a Spencer. Wow, they were really fighting. Yep, it, that was bad she, then. That's, I mean, that's bad. She goes to exit, but he stops her. He tells her if she'd rather be a Cassidine, then she is one. Luke asks her if Stefan is bribing her with money or drugging her like he did Leslie. Bobby just tells him to go home to Laura because they deserve each other. Stefan comes at that moment and tells Bobby they should go home. The elevator opens at the precise moment and they go in the elevator and the doors close. At the Cassadine Mansion, when did it get the name Spoon Island? I don't know. Or Windermere. Because we I keep calling the yeah, Cassadine they keep Mansion. Calling it Cassadine, yep. But we did the 411 about Windermere and I don't feel like they mentioned that the name transitioned. Interesting. Bobby and Stefan are having a romantic evening in front of the fire. Bobby complains about Luke and Stefan. And Stefan expresses concern for Leslie. He doubts Luke's ability to care for her properly. They talk about Luke insisting that Stefan is the shooter and and the confrontation that Stefan had with Luke in Catherine's hospital room. Is this when Leslie was still kind of like in that comatose? Yeah, because um, Stefan had been keeping her drugged to pretend like she was dead. And it'll get into this in a little bit that um, Bobby then realizes that she should be mad because she was the one that pronounced Leslie dead originally. Wow. Okay. Bobby tells Stefan that they should have befriended Catherine sooner because Luke might convince her to lie for him and says that Stefan shot her. She urges Stefan to go and talk to her. Stefan protests because it's Valentine's day, but Bobby insists he leaves to go to the hospital. And now it's called Windermere. Luke visits Bobby at Windermere. (laughs) So this is like the following week and tried to draw her in with, family concern but but had actually hoped to have planted the seed of doubt in her about Catherine and Stefan and then Catherine went to Bobby went to visit Catherine who told her a censored account of Stefan's visit Mm -hmm. Ooh, this when Stefan started to get romantic with Catherine yep Uh, they didn't even make it two months married and then on the 20th Laura almost lost control and was ready to lash out at Stefan but Bobby returned and blasted Laura Laura tried but failed to get through to Bobby. And then in March, Bobby told Felicia that, oh, we we forgot to talk about Felicia telling off uh, Portia this week. Oh, yeah. That was good, too. Okay. And then in March, Bobby told Felicia that she saw Stefan as a savior of wounded birds. Felicia asked Bobby if Stefan saved her, but Bobby defended the integrity of her marriage. Later, Bobby asked Stefan why he had married her. Bobby's question made Stefan reveal that he had first seen Bobby when she had identified Leslie's body many years ago. Stefan made it clear to Bobby that he loved her and he did not marry her out of pity. Nicholas returned and told Stefan about Spencer's plans. Stefan feigned surprise and was unable to connect with Nicholas. Stefan then lamented to Bobby how Laura was always how Laura always managed to hurt Nicholas. After Bobby left to attend Nicholas, attend to Nicholas. Stefan then placed a call to Catherine. The next week, Bobby asks Stefan point blank for the truth. Was he trying to save Leslie's life or was he there just to administer the drugs? As usual, Stefan manages to sidestep the issue. And then a few days later, Catherine flashes back to the previous evening when she was in Stefan's arms. She's brought back to reality by the sound of the doorbell. The nurse answers it and finds Bobby. Oh, she was in her wheelchair. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Taken aback, Catherine tries to sound calm and asks Bobby why she is there. She says she has something she needs to talk about. She doesn't understand why Catherine would go to Luke's hearing and go out of her way to help him. If she were Catherine, she would have been angry and just wanted to see justice served. Catherine says she would just she was just telling the truth. Sending someone to prison is just not her way. Bobby confides that Catherine informed the people at the hearing that the feud between the Spencers and Cassidines was futile and she should stop there and it really moved her. She thanks Catherine, who is still trying to keep her composure. And Carly wakes up to find a note from Tony reminding her about her appointment with Catherine. Apparently, she is not in a good mood and doesn't get any better with Luke when Luke rings her doorbell. She tells him to leave and he barges in. When she threatens to call the police, he unplugs the phone. Remember the days that you could do that? <laughs> he tells her to hurry up and get dressed because he int intends to drive her to work. When she tells him no, he snarls at her that it wasn't a request, it was an order. She is going to give him information about Catherine and Stefan, or he will tell Tony that Carly is really his stepdaughter. Ew. Mm -hmm. She is trying not to be intimidated by him and says he won't tell Tony because if Bobby found out, she would never forgive her brother. Luke finds this all very amusing. In case she hadn't noticed, they're already estranged. As they open the door to leave the apartment, a startled Bobby is ready to knock on the door. Carly makes up an excuse to leave the room, and Bobby questions Luke as to why he's here. He says Tony, Carly, Lucas, and Ruby are about the only family he has left in town. She questions why he would befriend a woman she so obviously dislikes, and he counters by asking why he, she would marry a man he dislikes. They bicker about Stefan, and Bobby gives up and tries to leave. But before she does, Luke asks her, honestly, are you sure you don't have any doubts about marrying the man you married, any suspicions, etc.? Because if you don't, then you're just lying to yourself and time's running out. She can't answer him, but she can't tell him no either. And then Bobby at the hospital, Bobby meets Audrey at the record room. She is surprised to discover that her husband moved all the hospital records to a warehouse for safekeeping. Bobby looks suspicious. She tells Audrey she wanted to see Leslie's death certificate because she wanted to know how she could have been fooled so easily. Audrey declares she is suspicious of Stefan also because of things that Tom has said. And that was Tom Hardy. Mm -hmm. Bobby wonders if mm -hmm. Stefan could be keeping other secrets from her as well. You think? Mm -hmm. Bobby then goes to the warehouse where all the records have been moved to. She searches for Leslie's gift certificate. Yeah, I think it means death certificate. I think it's a death certificate. <laughs> I mean, she's alive, so maybe it is more of a, <laughs> hey, this is a temporary death certificate. You'll get your gift certificate in 10 to 20 years. Oops. <laughs> when a loud noise startles her. In her surprise, she knocks some shelves down and a spark occurs from some of the exposed wires before she knows that the boxes of files and papers are all go up in flames and she's trapped. Thank goodness for computers. <laughs> Bobby was able to escape from the fire, but Tony unable. arrived. Oh, Bobby was unable to escape from the fire, but Tony arrived just in time to save her. Luke visits Bobby in the hospital after he learned about the fire. He tried to convince Bobby that Stefan had started the fire, but Bobby chooses to believe Stefan's claim of innocence. However, Bobby, however, was pleased to see that Luke still cared for her. Nicholas later rushed to the hospital and spent time by Bobby's side. Lucky also visited Bobby, who told him that family ties don't always outweigh life's choices. Lucas was still belligerent towards Carly, and Bobby asked Carly if Tony could stay with Lucas for a few days in the brownstone. So much happening already this year. I know. And then April 3rd, Bobby stepped stops by Tony's apartment to work out an arrangement for Lucas while she is in Arizona. Luke jumps up and tells Bobby to come on in. Bobby hesitates and says she really can't. She's double parked. Tony offers to go move her car after Luke promises not to bite, at least not anywhere that shows. She warns Luke not one word about Stefan. Humbly, Luke admits that sometimes he does go too far. Bobby says, if you're referring to the insinuation about Stefan and Catherine being romantically involved, I agree. Do you want to apologize? Luke smirks, takes a deep breath, and apologizes for all the fighting, not for speaking the truth. Bobby denies that her husband is involved with Catherine, and before a fight can break out, Tony comes back into the room. Tony and Bobby agree to arrangements for Lucas. As she leaves, Justice appears at the door. Bobby is a little concerned, but Tony assures her everything is okay. Justice apologizes for the bad timing. Once she's gone, Tony tells Justice he wants to drop the custody suit. He feels he and Bobby are handling the joint custody just fine. 
Luke thinks he's crazy for allowing Lucas to be exposed to the Cassidines, but Tony basically tells him to mind his own business. Then on the 8th, Bobby goes downstairs and thinks back to the night of lovemaking she and Stefan just had and seems worried when she realizes he seems distant. Stefan finds her on the couch and asks if she's okay. Are you worried about the trip tomorrow or Lucas? He wants to know. She jokes she seems to have caught his insomnia, but she has been wondering why he wants her to go. He convinces her it's because he thinks she is the best person for the job. This is some like PR thing for one of their um something with one of his like business things and for some reason he says he can't go because he has other business and so he keeps pushing her to go handle it for him um he would go with her other business Catherine though yeah okay (laughs) uh he would go with her but assures her he would go with her if he could but he'll be busy stefan starts showing her some things she might need to know on the computer when a loud crash comes from the other room It startles them both, and as Stefan leaves to investigate, Bobby accidentally hits a button on the computer, which brings up Catherine's physical therapy schedule. Bobby stares at it in disbelief, but turns off the computer before Stefan comes back. Stefan can see that she's upset, but she lies and tells him it's because she's tired. On May 5th, Tony... Sorry. Right. <laughs> exactly. I love that. Like, what is this crap? And why are you leaving files on a computer? Like, I'm sorry, men, do better, okay? No, no. How about the better is don't have files? Okay, the better is don't have files, but if you are going to be a cheater, at least be a smart cheater, okay? No. You can't you can't be this dumb. Yes, no, they can. It, they cheated. They are this dumb, but it annoys me like at least put some effort somewhere. If you're not going to put the effort into me, at least put the effort in not letting me find out what you're doing because you're just sloppy at this point. All right. Uh, May 5th, Tony finds a distraught Bobby at the hospital. He tries to console her about the suspicions that Stefan and Catherine are having an affair. They have a heart to heart talk about their marriage and friendship. Tony is paged and has to leave. On the 6th, Bobby came home to Stefan after confronting Catherine, and as she gets into bed, Stefan tries to seduce Bobby, and she shuns his advances, saying she needs sleep since she wasn't feeling good. Stefan is perplexed. On the 16th, Bobby blows up at Stefan after she is given papers saying that Tony is suing for custody of Lucas. The papers five months. Uh-huh. The papers oh. include things about her past mistakes like prostitution, giving up her daughter for adoption, and her affair with Damian Smith and Alan Quartermain. She tells Stefan that she needs him to m- needs him more now than ever and asks if he is willing to break the law for her because she needs her son. He assures her that he is there for her, but also says she doesn't need him as much as she thinks she does because she is an excellent mother and has proved it. They decide to start their new plan tonight by showing up at Tony's. Bobby and Stefan storm into Tony's, demanding to know why he would sue her for custody of Lucas on the grounds of not having good morals. She yells at him for starting these proceedings and then sending the papers to her on the anniversary of BJ's death. Tony tells her that he told Justice to drop the suit weeks ago, but she doesn't believe him. Carly tries to defend Tony, but Bobby explodes on her too. Once Bobby was done venting and about to leave, she tells Tony that he will live to regret what he has done. Once they leave, Tony thanks Carly for her loyalty to him. Carly is uneasy, but keeps quiet. On June 5th, Luke begins to explain to Bobby about the Fabergé Fabergé egg and the contents that lay inside. He tells her that there is a computer virus chip inside that Stefan plans to use on the mainframe computers at GH, maybe on the entire world. Bobby doesn't believe him. Luke tells her that one day that he was PO'd and he tossed the egg when he noticed that it had three notches in it, just like the medallions that the Cassidines wear. One of his friends at the WSB helped him open the egg. He made a copy of the chip and put the copy back in the egg. Bobby thinks that Luke is crazy and asks him, how does he know that she won't just go t- tell Stefan everything that he just told her? Luke tells her to do what she thinks is right as she leaves. June 30th, Stefan, who had been warned over the phone or had been warned by the phone call from Alexis about the drugs she saw Bobby with at the hospital earlier, 
jumps Bobby from behind as she opens the wall where the box is. She tries to lie her way out of it, saying that she was looking for evidence of his affair with Catherine. He is in a rage as he forces her to hand over his medallion, and he tries to get her to drink the port she had drugged as he switched the glasses around. He thought she was going to poison him, and she denied it. He tells her he knows what she and Luke have been up to. He feels Luke was her pimp as she forced her way into his bed just to get information from him. She informs him it wasn't that way at first and that she stupidly fell in love with him, but now she knows what a fool she's been. He starts insulting her about her past as a hooker and tells her she belongs back in the streets. He goes and rifles through her clothes and starts throwing them at her, throwing them at her telling her to get out. Bobby is in tears. She says she doesn't want anything he gave her. You only thought you bought me. If I'm a whore, I'm a whore you can't afford. He tells oh, her, I love it. I love it. <laughs> he tells her he never forgets or forgives and he will ruin them both. She leers at him and says, we'll let the judge decide who's going to ruin who. Later at the wharf, Luke confronts a tearful Bobby and tells her they'll find another way to get stuff on. He takes her to his house. July 4th at the hospital, Bobby walks up to Tony and he asks her if she's all right. Bobby replies no and tells him that she has left Stefan, that she is dropping the custody suit and that he can come and see Lucas anytime he wants. She tells him that she is staying with Luke, so he offers her to come to the brownstone, but she doesn't want to impose on him there. Bobby starts joking about how they can really pick them, her Stefan and him Carly. Tony tells her that he is no longer living at the Brownstone, that he has moved back in with Carly. He tells her that she has changed and that if she wants, he will see Lucas by himself. She tells him that she is happy for him. She's trying. Sure. I'm so happy for you getting back together with that girl. Um, July 7th, Audrey confronts Bobby about the missing pills from the hospital. Bobby admits the truth that she was the one to take them, but with good reason. She tells Audrey that she can't tell her exactly why she took them, but asks her to delay a day or two before reporting her. Meanwhile, Luke goes to a Russian Orthodox church to try and find out what the Russian Russian message on Stefan's computer means. The priest helps him out and translate the message. It says final activation on June 28th at 20. Catherine goes to see Stefan and tells him that she knows why him and Bobby separated. She believes their attraction to one, one another is partly the reason. Catherine lets him know that she is hopeful for their future together. They share a kiss and at that moment Bobby appears. This confirms what Bobby suspected and she begins to hurl insults at Catherine. Stefan defends her and yells at Bobby. Catherine leaves and Bobby threatens Stefan and vice versa. He tells Bobby her career as a nurse at GH and at any other hospital will be over if he decides it should be. He then orders her off his property and tells her he'll be in touch with his terms. On July 28th, at the Outback, Bobby was called away from her table by a waitress to go and help a sick person in the bathroom. She asks if everything was okay, and the girl says, yes, she's just pregnant, and it was Carly. Bobby was completely taken aback and hurled her usual insults at Carly. Carly took them only for a few seconds until she threw a few of her own. Before walking out, Bobby told Carly to walk away or Bobby wouldn't be responsible for what happened. With tears in her eyes, Carly asked what else was new. Bobby never was. That left Bobby a bit puzzled. Bobby let Tony have it and even went as far as to suggest it might not be his child. She left looking very hurt. On October 7th, Bobby was called away from her table by... Oh, I read that. I did this twice. Remember? Sorry. Well, no, it said July and then it jumped to October. It says October 7th, oh, but then that also happened in July. No, it didn't happen in July. It was in October. I messed up. Okay. Whatever. Yeah, there's the pills. There's the Outback. Yeah. Yeah, she left looking very hurt. There we go. Um, and then 10-10, Bobby walks into the conference room, sees Catherine crying, and says, don't do this. He's not worth it. Humiliated, she says, I should have listened to you. Everyone tried to warn me, but I was too arrogant to listen. Bobby asks her if there's anything she can do for her. She says no, so please just shut the door on the way out. 
Bobby looks at her and leaves. Outside the conference room, Luke and Stefan are still at each other's throat. Alexis gets off the elevator. They have a few choice words and then they leave. Luke asks Bobby what is wrong with Stefan. I couldn't get him mad for nothing. Maybe it's his conscience. His friend Catherine, he fried Catherine in front of everyone. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he do this knowing she could finger him for the shooting? And this was whenever Catherine was like not not going along with the plan and Mm -hmm. she wouldn't she didn't want to wrongfully uh accuse luke like she had said earlier and so stefan like flipped out on her about her allegiance to him and whatever and then 10 23 bobby asked carly when the baby was due her opinion was that tony would end up having to take care of her and the baby she said there is a difference between going to visit a sick friend for a couple of days and taking care of a baby for the long haul Bobby said Carly lacked the qualities of being a good mother. They were having a large yelling match when AJ showed up and broke up the argument. He asked Carly what the fight had been about, but she just blew off the questions. Then in November, Luke talks to Bobby about his findings and tries to guess what they are. He assumes Alexis has something going on that Stefan knows nothing about. Luke assumes someone will come looking for him once they figured out it was him who broke in. Meanwhile, Bobby is looking for a missing necklace, and when she finds it, it brings back memories of the night she walked into her room and found Carly trying it on. She also remembers the night she came home and saw Tony and Carly dancing. Luke asks Bobby what is wrong, and she tells him she can't stop thinking about what Carly has done, and Luke tells her she's got to forget about that girl. He says that Carly just wanted to get her hands on everything she never had, and Bobby says out loud that maybe Carly had this all planned long before she got to Port Charles. (laughs) <laughs> Luke tries to make her forget the subject as well as that thought. Bobby does ask him why Carly would throw all the stuff about her dead daughter in her face, and she can't understand how she could be so cruel. Virginia calls Luke and gets a hold of Bobby. She tells her that they need to talk about Caroline. She apologizes for not calling, but explains that she was in the hospital. Virginia tells Bobby that she really wants to find Caroline and wants to know if maybe Luke could do it. If not, she suggests hiring a private investigator and splitting the cost. She tells Bobby that Caroline came to see her in the hospital and that she calls regularly. In fact, she called a few minutes ago and told her she's getting married. Bobby is a little taken aback because she thinks that her daughter is dead. Virginia tells Bobby that she is going to send her some more pictures. The two hang up and Bobby is more puzzled than ever. On November 5th, remember she- Oh, sorry. I was going to say, remember, she thinks that her daughter's dead because that's what Luke told her. Luke told her, yeah. The day that she found Tony and Carly in bed together. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Luke tells Bobby to tell him everything that Virginia Benson said to her. She says that she wants her daughter back, and Luke wants to know if Bobby told her the truth. She says she wanted to, but Virginia kept talking about her and seemed hopeful for the future. She also mentioned that Virginia planned on sending some pictures, which Bobby doesn't think will mean all that much anymore. What she really wants is for Virginia to help her grieve for her daughter. Luke tells Bobby that it's not their it's not their job to take care of Virginia. He tries to convince her that she's doing just fine. Bobby wants to believe that Caroline is alive and about to marry the man of her dreams. She praises Luke for being able to tell her the truth about her daughter dying, and she knows that they are not able not about telling secrets. Luke begins to explain why he told her, but she doesn't want to hear it. She's already late for work. What she doesn't realize was he was about to tell her the truth. Tony heads over to have lunch with Bobby and explain the wedding plans to her for Lucas. He wants Lucas to be his best man. Ugh. He's a child. You have him as a rain bearer. Right. No, you don't. I could see him as an adult, maybe. Right. But no. 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 They talk a while. Then the baby is brought up and the due date. Bobby seems surprised that he said the baby is due in October. That's funny. AJ told me it was due in December. Tony says that doesn't make sense. They're so close. Why would he be thinking that? She brings it up. She brings up to him that Caroline's, the daughter she gave away as a teenager, adopted mother called, and it's sad. She just can't accept the fact that her that she is gone. She talks about her like she is still alive. You think at some point Carly would have also said Virginia's name? Right. Tony? Right. So then Bobby and Tony are in the middle of discussing the different impressions they have as to when Carly's due date is. And there is a big difference between two months. Yeah. Isn't it strange how some people think she's due in December, Tony ponders. But he insists the only thing that's important is that he's the father and they're so happy together. Bobby tries to be happy for him, explaining that she thinks he's a wonderful father. 
In fact, she tells him if only she had been honest with him when they first got married, maybe things would have been different. Maybe she would have even been able to see Caroline before she died. Bobby meets Luke at the Outback, where she admits she can't stop thinking about Caroline. Luke urges her to move on with her life, but she compares what she is feeling now for Caroline with the grief she felt over BJ. He gently reminds her that neither BJ nor Caroline are ever coming back. On November 18th, Carly talks to her baby and Bobby walks in. She asks how Carly is feeling and she says, fine, thanks. Carly is a bit defensive in speaking with Bobby. Bobby tells her she knows she must be feeling scared last night. She must have been feeling scared last night. She is concerned for the baby because she still cares for Tony. Carly tells Bobby if it wasn't for her coming to Port Charles, Bobby would still be happy with Tony. But after she says this, she apologizes for even saying anything. Bobby tells Carly she sees herself when she looks at her, but at least she has Luke and Carly has no family to help her. A few days later, Luke wants to know why Carly and Tony didn't get married. Bobby explains all that happened explains all that happened and he asks if when they were i'm sorry whenever they were supposed to get married uh carly started having uh contractions because aj showed up at that point at the um courthouse and was like is that my baby or is that tony's baby and she was trying to keep aj from telling tony that and so she was like oh no i think i'm in labor and so they went to the hospital so that's why bobby was like oh you must have been scared last night because you thought you were going into premature labor blah 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 Oh, boy. <laughs> you know, for a show that is centered, centered around so many medical professionals and, you know, a hospital, why do these people think they can get away with lying about a medical condition? I don't right. understand. So Bobby doesn't... Oh, Bobby explains all that happened, and he asks if she could have been faking the pain. Bobby doesn't think so and says she saw something in Carly earlier that made her see, made her see her in a different light. She explains how she saw Carly talking to her baby and she felt compassion for her. It reminded her of herself when she was pregnant. She says that Carly asked how she was able to give up her child. And Bobby says that Carly wasn't judging her and she wasn't angry at her for asking. <clears throat> Bobby thanks Luke for not showing her the photos and she hopes to never see them. Oh, so he intercepted the photos from Virginia. Yep. When she leaves, he takes them from his desk drawer and puts them in the safe. Why didn't he just burn them? Anyway. For Thanksgiving at the Brownstone, everyone is gathered together, ready for dinner when Carly and Tony arrive to give Lucas a Thanksgiving Day present. Right? That's Who does thing. for Thanksgiving? It's called pie. It's called extra calories. It's called a parade. You don't get presents for Thanksgiving. Right. The atmosphere is very strained. However, Bobby invites them to stay for dinner. After she tells them they all need to get along for the sake of the children, Carly and Tony agree to stay. When they all sit down for dinner... Carly gets up from the table and goes into the other room, obviously upset. Bobby goes to see her, and they share a warm moment. Then in December at the hospital, Amy tries to get Bobby on the subject of Carly. Amy start- And this is the original Amy Vining. Yep. Amy starts to bad- badmouth Carly and says she hopes Carly doesn't show up for Christmas. Bobby agrees she doesn't want Carly around. Carly walks up and demands to know who Bobby doesn't want around. Bobby tells her, honestly, that it's her. Carly starts a fight with Bobby, telling her the closeness they have shared lately has all been for show. Bobby tells Carly she is paranoid, and after a few choice words between the two, Carly walks off. Bobby tells Tony she had no trouble looking. She has no trouble looking at him. He tells her his life has come full circle. He says he is close to having a newborn baby and a stillborn marriage. Hmm. He wishes she could have told him the truth about the whole situation, and he now sees it was a mistake, and he made a complete mess of himself. He claims he doesn't love Carly now, and he isn't sure that he ever did. Tony apologizes for making her listen, and she says maybe it's a little too early to be thinking of all these things. Tony tells Bobby he thought you were supposed to get wiser as you got older, and by the time he realized who Carly was, she was his. He wants to know why him. Why was he the target? Oh, is this when he found out that AJ was the dad? Yes. Okay. Tony also says it's time to start piling all his guilt on top of... It's time to stop piling all his guilt on top of BJ's grave. Oh, maybe so then, he doesn't yet. I think maybe he does. Because, I think he knows there's a possibility that someone else is the dad. Is that uh, where it is? Because he's suing for... Yeah. Okay. So, then, so then Tony tells Bobby he is suing Carly for sole custody of the baby. Realizing Bobby remembers him drawing up papers to do the same thing for her not too long ago, Tony apologizes to Bobby for starting a case against Bobby for Lucas's custody. He tells her he never would have gone through with the suit and the whole thing just proves how out of touch he was at the time bobby asks him if he was 
if he is really ready to go after Carly, knowing all the circumstances. She also tells him that she was beginning to see Carly in a somewhat better light. Bobby tells him she knows Carly, seems to really care about the child, and having been in a position where everyone tells you you will be an unfit mother, she understands Carly's feelings. You know what? They didn't know until after he was born, right? They did the paternity test right. after Michael was born. After he was born. Yeah. So I think he just knew at that time that it was a as uh, there was a chance. chance. Okay. Bobby learned and then on Christmas Eve, Bobby learned from Tony that Carly had claimed that Jason was the father of her child. Carly and Jason accidentally crashed the hospital's Christmas party. Before Carly could see her doctor, Bobby confronted Carly about what she had done. Carly told Bobby that she had only been after Tony for his money and that she has always been seeing Jason. Carly told Bobby that she finally got tired of living up to Tony's expectations and that she no longer needed him since Jason was rich. Thinking that Carly had at least cared for Tony, Bobby was shocked by Carly's attitude and regretted that she had felt even an ounce of sympathy towards her situation. Jason waited for news on Carly. On December 29th, Jason waited for news on Carly. She had delivered a baby boy, but she was not doing so well. Bobby, holding Carly's baby, oh, not even knowing it's her grandbaby, not even knowing it's Michael, told her, <laughs> told her she'd better not leave with the baby, leave her baby without a mother. And then on December 30th at the hospital, Bobby and Jason waited to see if Carly's baby's heart problem could be reversed with medication. Meanwhile, Carly slipped into a coma and needed emergency surgery, which could possibly require a hysterectomy. They love to do this. I was just thinking, yeah, we just had that with Christina. Luke watched as Bobby pleaded with Jason not to let that happen. And to Luke's surprise, Jason agreed with Bobby and took her advice. Meanwhile, Tony continued to pursue his custody options regarding Carly's baby and became enraged when he learned about the medical complications with Carly and the baby. Later, Bobby learned that the medication hadn't helped the baby and that he would need surgery to correct his heart problem. I yeah. think we're just going to wind up going year by year right now because that's kind of a good place to stop. All right. Leave oh, it yeah. in suspense. Does, does baby Michael survive the surgery? <laughs> All right. So we are going to leave off there. What happens to the baby? <laughs> I, hope I hope the baby is okay. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> does the baby ever get a name? Do we ever figure out who his dad is? <laughs> All right. Yeah, so next week we will pick up on 1998 of Bobby. But on Monday, we will recap this week's shows. So have a good weekend. And we'll meet you at the pier. Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform. Don't forget to leave us a review. And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pier 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect, so if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at peer54podcast at gmail.com. 